My name is David Andre and here are 30 AI terms that everyone should know. Number one, AGI. This is perhaps the most used buzzword out there. AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence. Basically, it's a type of AI that can do anything a human can. Sam Altman described it the best. AGI is basically the equivalent of a median human. Right now, most of AI can only do specific tasks, but an AGI wouldn't be limited in any way. Number two, the Turing test. This is a way to check if a computer can think like a human. The Turing test is an interesting experiment named after the AI pioneer Alan Turing. In the test, person communicates with a computer and a human through text messages without knowing which is which. If the person can't tell the difference between a computer and a human, then the computer successfully passed the Turing test. Number three, chatbot. You've most likely used one of these already. The most popular chatbot in the world is of course ChatGPT. It can answer questions, help with problems, and even write code. The reason why chatbots are becoming much better than Google search is because they understand context. If you Google one thing and then a few minutes later you Google something else, the results will be completely unrelated. However, if you do the same with a chatbot like ChatGPT, it will actually understand what you mean and what you want. Number four, the singularity. A lot of people conflate the terms AGI and the singularity, which creates unnecessary confusion. Each of these terms means something different. The singularity is a point in the future when AI becomes so smart that it will improve itself without any help from humans. This exponential rate of self-improvement would quickly become so fast that we wouldn't be able to keep up. That is the singularity. Uh, it's very difficult to predict what will happen in that circumstance. It's called the singularity. It's, you know, it's a singularity like a black hole because yeah. you, you don't know what happens after that. It's hard to predict. This unprecedented event would become a tipping point in human history. While the concept of the singularity is widely debated among scientists, futurists and philosophers, with each passing day it seems more and more likely that this event will indeed happen. Number 5. Robotics. Now this concept is much easier to understand. Robotics is the science of making robots. The definition of a robot is a machine that can do stuff on its own, like moving around, grabbing things or following instructions. Robots are used in various industries such as manufacturing, healthcare and even space exploration. Robots are mainly used to help with tasks that might be difficult or dangerous for humans. Number six, big data. This term is usually associated with companies like Google and Facebook. And that makes sense since these companies have large amounts of data from their users. To put it simply, big data means having a lot of information from many different sources. Having a lot of data is essential when building advanced AI models, but more on that later. Number seven, Python. While this isn't necessarily an AI term, it's important to understand what Python is, because you'll hear it all the time as you learn more about AI. Python is a programming language. It is one of the most popular and widely used languages out there. What makes it so great is that it's super easy to learn. It's also known for its simplicity and readability. This makes it the perfect choice for AI development. And as a result, Python has by far the most AI libraries out there. So if you want to do something in the AI field, learning Python is the way to go. Number eight, model. Now I'm not talking about Instagram models, I'm talking about AI models. An AI model helps computers learn from data. You can think of it as the computer's brain, which helps it to make decisions and predictions. AI models are typically developed using machine learning algorithms. But David, what is machine learning? Don't worry, we'll get to that soon. Number nine, supercomputers. I think everybody can imagine what a supercomputer is. It's an extremely powerful computer designed to process huge amounts of data. And because of that, supercomputers are absolutely necessary for developing powerful AI. They achieve their extraordinary performance through parallel processing. That basically means dividing complex tasks into smaller, more manageable tasks. What's interesting is that for training AI models, it has been found that graphics cards or GPUs are much more efficient than normal processors or CPUs. But those supercomputers aren't using
gaming consumer level graphics cards like the ones you and I have in our PCs. They have their own custom graphics cards, which are much more powerful and much more expensive. While the best consumer GPU out there, the 4090, costs a little under $2000, the best AI GPU, the H100 from Nvidia, will set you back a whopping 40 grand. Number 10, prompt. You're probably using prompts all the time without even knowing. See, people who are new to AI often say words like message or text, when in reality, they're talking about a prompt. For example, you might see someone saying, what is the best ChatGPT message? If you ask questions like this, you'll look like an amateur. Instead, when talking to a chatbot, refer to your messages as prompts. And to be clear, this applies to all kinds of AI, not just chatbots. Number 11, tokens. In AI, token is a small piece of a sentence. When we, humans, talk or write, we use words, phrases, characters to form sentences. AI programs break down these sentences into smaller parts called tokens. This helps the AI understand the meaning of the sentence better, just like you might break a puzzle into smaller pieces to solve it. Tokens don't have a defined length, that's entirely up to the person creating the AI. You can have long tokens that consist of multiple words or very short tokens. To give you an actual example, ChatGPT uses tokens that are four characters long. Number 12, text to image. Now I'm gonna group a bunch of similar AI terms together to better explain what they mean. You've probably heard the phrase text to image, text to video, or image to image. And as the names of these keywords suggest, they are describing an AI system that does a specific task. Text to image allows you to create the image you want just by describing it with words. Text to video is perhaps even more mind blowing. It lets you generate an entire video just from a simple text message. But image to image is a little confusing. Like why would you create an image from an image? Well, let's say your favorite goldfish dies, rest in peace. You can take an image of that goldfish, put it into an image to image AI model like stable diffusion and use that original image to create new ones. So maybe you want to put your goldfish into an ocean or on the moon. Well, the incredible image to image systems we have today can do that. Number 13, neural network. I know this term sounds intimidating, but bear with me. A neural network is a type of a computer program that works a bit like the human brain. It allows computers to learn from examples and to make decisions. Just like our brain has many tiny parts called neural neurons which work together to think and solve problems, a neural network has similar parts called artificial neurons. And these neurons form a net, therefore the name neural network. Number 14, machine learning. This is a way for computers to learn new things without being specifically programmed. It's like teaching a child to ride a bike. You don't tell them every little detail about how to pedal and balance, but they learn by trying and getting better over time. In the same way, machine Machine learning helps computers learn from examples and get better at solving problems. This can be used for many tasks like understanding what's in a picture, predicting the weather or recommending movies you might like. Machine learning helps computers get smarter and more helpful over time. Number 15, OpenAI. You probably know OpenAI as the company that created ChatGPT. OpenAI is a leading research lab founded by Sam Altman, Elon Musk and others in 2015. Its mission is to ensure that AGI benefits all of humanity. One of OpenAI's most notable contributions is the development of the GPT models, which I'll get to in a bit. Earlier this year, Microsoft invested $10 billion into OpenAI. Because of this, some people think that OpenAI has a chance of becoming a trillion dollar company if it continues to advance at this rate. Number 16. Generative AI. An AI is considered generative when it can create things like images, texts, stories, you name it. Imagine you want to draw a picture of a unicorn, but you don't know how to draw. You can use a generative AI text to image model, which takes your idea and creates the picture for you so that you can enjoy your unicorn. Number 17, cloud computing. In its simplest form, cloud computing means using someone else's computer. Let's say you have a lot of photos, but your phone doesn't have enough space to store them all. With cloud computing, you can store those photos on the internet and then you can look at them from any device. Cloud computing is also used by many companies 
to access supercomputers without having to spend millions of dollars. Number 18, GitHub. GitHub is a website where people can store and share their computer code. It's like a big library of code that anyone can use and contribute to. When someone writes a program, they can save it on GitHub so that other people can see it, use it, and even help to improve it. This is really useful for people who work together on big projects because they can all see the latest changes and make sure they're working on the right version. GitHub also helps people learn from each other's code and discover new ideas for their own project. Number 19, Transformer. Now we're not talking about the movie, we're talking about the AI keyword. Transformers are a type of a computer program that helps machines understand and use human language. The invention of the Transformer completely revolutionized AI because it can do many language tasks much better than older models. Number 20, Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion is one of the most popular and widely used AI softwares out there. It is mainly used to generate detailed images, though it can also be applied to other tasks such as in painting, out painting, and generating image to image images. It was developed by the startup Stability AI in collaboration with a number of academic researchers and non-profit organizations. Remember the name Stability AI, they're gonna be a massive company. Number 21, LLM. This stands for Large Language Model and it's a type of AI that's really good at understanding and working with human language. These models are called large because they have lots of information stored in them. And by lots, I mean hundreds of petabytes. Some popular LLMs you might have already heard of are GPT-4 and Llama, which can do many different tasks like translation, answering questions, writing summaries, anything. Number 22, deep learning. Deep learning is a more advanced way of machine learning. It's a really important part of modern AI and has made it possible for machines to do things we once thought were only possible by humans. Number 23, computer vision. Computer vision is a part of AI that teaches computers to see and understand images and videos like humans do. This helps them understand what's in the picture and even find specific objects. Computer vision is used in many things we use every day, like social media apps that recognize faces and photos or self-driving cars that need to see the road and other vehicles. Number 24, AlphaGo. AlphaGo is a famous AI program created by the company DeepMind. What made AlphaGo really special is that it was able to learn and become really good playing the game Go, which is a very complex Chinese board game. Go is much harder for a computer to learn than chess because there are so many more moves and possibilities. AlphaGo used AI techniques like deep learning to study millions of Go games. In 2016, AlphaGo made history when it beat one of the best human Go players in the world, showing that AI could master even the most complex games. Number 25, narrow AI. Basically, if an AI can only do one group of tasks, it's a narrow AI. It's like having a robot that's really good at making pizza, but can't do anything else. Number 26, mid journey. Currently, mid journey is the most popular text to image AI out there. The mid journey discord server has over 14 million people and even if just 10% of those people end up buying the 30 bucks a month standard plan, that's already $42 million in the bank every single month. I guess it pays to have a really good product. Number 27, GPT. GPT is the AI model behind ChatGPT. It stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And we already went through Generative and Transformers, so you should have a decent idea of what it does. But if you don't, it's a type of AI model that's really good at generating and working with language. Number 28, Hugging Face. This is one of the largest AI communities out there. But Hugging Face is also a company that makes tools for building AI applications, especially ones to deal with language. Number 29, DALI. DALI is basically OpenAI's version of Midjourney. DALI has been used to create all sorts of images, from realistic ones to absolutely ridiculous ones. It's an example of how AI can 
be used for creative tasks and shows the power of AI for images. Number 30, perimeter. Yeah, I can't really pronounce it. In AI, a perimeter is like a little knob or setting. When an AI model is being trained, it adjusts these perimeters based on the examples it sees. Like when people tune their guitars by messing with the strings. The more perimeters an AI model has, the more it can learn and the better it can perform. Now, if you have learned anything from this video, then please consider subscribing. It takes two seconds.